Hello again and welcome to my studio. This is uh, the second video in a series where I use all my jelly prints from uh, uh, two or three weeks ago. I made uh, two videos where I jelly printed with gold leaf and with um, metallic powders and pigments. And I, in that video, these two videos, I promised I would make some collages out of the papers I made in those two sessions. And um, this is the second uh, collage I will be making today. There are links below in the description box for the videos where I jelly print and I will also put a link to the collage, the first collage in this small series. I think I will make the third one. But we will see after today if I would like to do another one. <clears throat> Sorry. The substrate I, I use for my collages is um, 425 GSM watercolor paper and uh, its substrate here is 20 by 20 centimeter or 8 by 8 inches. And by the way, my name is Lisbeth and I'm a Danish abstract mixed media artist um, and I also very much like to teach. So um, let us see what we can come up with today, what kind of collage I can create today. This was all the jelly prints I made in those two sessions and uh, <clears throat> it can be quite overwhelming to sit with all that many papers at the same time. So my advice is to pick, uh, yeah, depending on the size of the substrate and the size of the collage you want to make, but pick uh, four to six pieces of paper you think looks nice together. And I have picked those papers here. You can see I have cut all the white edges off and here are two roll-off sheets. And uh, I just take my ruler and tear all the white edges from the paper off. It is just ordinary copy paper these prints are made on. So now there's no white mount there. And I think these papers look nice together, so I will try to make a collage in them. Also, I have found some, I think it is tissue paper. I can't quite remember. Perhaps it is the paper that architects use as called manifold. Uh, I can't quite remember. But uh, these are jelly prints of ferns. And perhaps they would look nice with a fern in this piece. But uh, you never know until you start working. I quite don't know how this paper will react when I glue it to a jelly print or a roll-off sheet. Um, but, uh, so I think I will try to do that before I start the collage. So I will just... Yeah, some of the paper off here. And I don't think I want it under some dark papers or dark paper under this here. I quite don't know if it will disappear but I think perhaps under this this could be nice here under that color here perhaps there yeah I think I will try to glue it down and see what happens before I ruin a whole collage and then I know in the, for the future how this paper will be it I have some fluid matte medium and I will put a layer down here 
There's a long way to the bottom of that bottle there. And then I will lay it down there. Oh, that seems to work very well. You can see it always nearly melts down in the in the paper. So uh, I will drag from the middle and out to avoid getting bubbles in my paper. That is nice. So now I know this for the future. That this paper works well. So put the lid on here again. And uh, I will let this dry. So this is dry now. So I think I will tear the strip off here. Go out from that piece. much the same this one so perhaps this is better oh I also have this piece here the green That is better. Take some of this off here. So I can see. If we put this strip down there, and that under there. I think that looks nice. I will tear this off here. So I think I will remove this and yeah. I will remove this and be back. Yeah, I think I will use a piece of this here with a gold leaf. Yeah. And a piece of this perhaps. <laughs> Again, make the strips different width. That's more exciting if they all are, have the same width here, yeah, and perhaps a piece there and a piece there. 
I'm gonna have to chuck there. Yeah. of this let me see and it gets quite blue I'm gonna have to take this here yeah I think I like this better this is called auditioning <laughs> your pieces This would be enough. So there, there, and there, and this up here. Yeah, that looks nice. So I will put it in backwards here, and so this is the way I'm going to glue it down. So I will take my glue stick. And uh, it's quite new, so it is fresh and juicy. And put a good amount of glue on, and uh, don't be precious about it. And put your first piece down here. There. And I have a cloth that I can finish it down. And then I will take, yeah, was it this way or that way? Yeah, this is, yeah, this way here. And I like the torn edges there. Bim, bim, bim. Sorry for the noise. <clears throat> I think my voice is a little, yeah, I don't know. I sound strange today, I think. More strange than usual. <laughs> Put that down. And because this is printed on black paper, when you tear it, one of the papers are getting these black edges here, and that I think looks very nice. But uh, it needs a little more glue there. So, and then there was this piece. And this piece, and this piece. And perhaps this should only just be a little snippet here. Yeah, I will glue the whole piece down and let's see. Again, there's the black edges I like so much. It gives it a little extra, I think, these. And just a small part here. And this, so this, these three pieces all get different widths. And these two are also different in the size. That's nice. I'm not 
sure I like the white edges there, but I can take uh, some some paint when I'm done and give it a little down there. And this uh, here is the piece with the fern. And you can't hardly see why I have gl glued it down. And that's very nice. has to go here yeah I thought enough I have yeah you should should <laughs> cut your papers before you you're sure that they will cover the whole thing but uh, I have this paper here so I can just glue that down mm -mm. I don't think anyone will notice that. Perhaps this way here. It is a little more difficult to, to glue when there's um, Fluid medium on, I think, or perhaps I wasn't so precise going it up. So there. Again, there's some white edge here I don't like. But, uh, I could give it a little paint afterwards. I will glue this down and be back. I think it is dry now, so I will cut the edges clean and we can have a look at it. no need for turning it around it would look yeah perhaps it could also go no, I, I think it is going this way and this white edge I don't like so um, I have a stabile woody yeah I can give it a little blue I also have a contest Yeah, and my water brush. So we can get rid of this white edge there. That was better. Yeah, I think that was that. And now the Fonda Dora question is, do it need some embroidery? I will take a look, closer look and decide if I want to do more with it. Um, when I look at it, the piece here, I think there's a lot going on from here and down. And this is a more quiet place, so if I want to embroider anything, I think it should be up here. Uh, you can see this was the one I made in the previous video. In this little seri series this is a feather stitch and I don't think it would be nice if they run that way but 
we can make and I can make some small uh, fly stitch I think they are called in English uh, up here a row so they will look like a row of a hill with small trees and I think this is what I will go for so I will find my needle my small needle here I think this is the one and thread it that is always <laughs> so awkward doing this on camera but that was and again, I will. Sorry for my arm. I'm sorry for my arm. I will take my tape and have that ready. And of course, this has curled up during the nights. That's uh, it happens every time. So here yeah, now, I think I'm ready. So I think I will, I hope you can see it, I will punch some holes here, a hole there, and a hole there, and a hole there, and here in the, where the two colors are different. And I will come up in the first here. And secure it with some tape because I don't like any big fat nuts on my substrate when it is paper. It doesn't matter if it's fabric, fabric is much more forgiving. And go down here. that hold and up in the next there and put my thread in the loop and go down there and then you have a little fly stitch and uh, you can't hardly see it I think I will have to use black so uh, I will change the color of the thread just a moment. Yeah, I'm back and I uh, have changed the thread to a black thread. And that's the thing you can't predict, even though I have taken the whole uh, cone here and think, uh, thought uh, you can see that. But as soon as it gets a single thread, it drowns. Another thing is, many have asked about this tool. It's a tool my hobby has made for me. It's a wooden handle and a part from a compass. And then I can turn this little wheel here and remove and the, the needle I've put in. But this is a thing you can do yourself. It's a corkscrew and it's not champagne. I don't, I can't remember what kind it was. And then I have taken a darning needle and mocked it up in the corkscrew and gave it a small kind of a fluid glue here and let it dry and this is a very nice thing to punch with too and that cost you nearly nothing except you have to drink a beer or some wine with a corkscrew and that's a nice thing now yeah let us consider here not consider continue here two holes and a hole there and a hole there come up at the left hole at the top go down in the right hole come up in the hole in the middle up in the loop and go down in the hole in the bottom. And we can make them a little difference and width and height. 
I think that would look nice. Again, come up in the left hole. Down in the right hole. Up in the hole in the middle. And down here. In the hole in the bottom. That is, uh, I think, a fly stitch in English. I will do a road until it's approximately down here and be back. So now for the last stitch down here. Like this and again. Cut it off. Take a little piece of tape. And secure it. to put it under some heavy books for pressure so it can lie totally flat. It buckles a little. Not much, but it's okay. Yeah, so this ended up like this. I think it looks like a, a hillside with some small trees far away. Uh, and I think it uh, looks quite nice. For me, it is so exciting making collages because when I woke up this morning, I know I was going to be filming this and using these papers, but I have absolutely no idea what the outcome will be because it is so intuitive for me making these collages, even though when I start I plan and I, and um, I move the, my papers around and I'm doing an uh, what you can call auditioning, but I haven't a big I haven't a big plan in my head when I start that I think this should be the, like this and and this should be like that. So I never know what the outcome will be, but uh, this is the outcome for this day's collage in this small series, and I think I will make another one. I have lots of papers yet. But um, I will take some close up at the end of the video and um, I hope you uh, like the idea of using your different papers for making collages and will give it a try yourself. So uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, perhaps consider subscribing my little Danish channel that will be very nice and very helpful for me. So, um, yeah, let us put it in frame here. Um, take care, be creative, and take bye bye for now. And uh, until we see each other again next time, bye bye.